Hello everyone, good morning. Um, I need to do my board. I um, did not do that yesterday when I left school because I was just about ready to be gone from school. I had been there for so long dealing with a certain situation that I needed to deal with. And so I need to do my boards this morning and get that over and done with. So I need to pull out my planner because I don't even remember what it is that I'm supposed to be doing today. Let's pull that out. All right. What is this month? Oh, I've already started cleaning some things for other months. Okay, let's see. Today is Wise Words Wednesday. I'm going to need to take that up there with me. Okay, so today's board reads, Wise Words Wednesday, when everything feels like an uphill battle, just think about the view from the top. So what does this mean to you? Close up. Okay, so uh, that's what the quote that they're gonna come in and do. I really like using quotes and having them kind of interpret what they think that it means because then we can have like a really good conversation about it once we start doing our actual morning meeting. So I'm gonna do my message for this morning, which by the way, none of them read my entire message. And one was like, we didn't know where the sticky notes are. And I'm like, that's not an excuse because they were always where they're at. So none of them read my message and none of them put it up. And I expressed my hurt at the end of the day about how none of them had read my message and did anything that I asked them to do in my message. So, nice little trick there to be able to watch to see if they're actually doing what they're supposed to be doing. Good morning. Um, I did not finish vlogging yesterday. So I have good reasons. Yes, I know. I think I'm always coming up with excuses and my hair right here is driving me crazy. Let me fix this real fast. Okay, so I do have good reasons, I promise. <coughs> Which by the way, y'all went to bed at eight o'clock yesterday. Like, how sad is that? I feel like such a lame-o going to bed at eight o'clock. Guess my body's still not done getting better. Anyways. <coughs> So I do have a very good reason as to why I stopped vlogging because there was just a lot of little things that were happening and then I had a meeting here. I had lunch with my partner teacher to like talk to kind of catch her up because she was gone in the morning. So sorry about that. But I will just combine some days together for that. So I don't have a meeting this morning which is really, really nice. Um, I am actually just gonna be able to get some work done this morning um, versus me having to like skip out at eight o'clock. And I did get here probably like five minutes earlier than what I usually do. Five minutes is not really much of anything, but still, it's good. So, um, it's Thursday, it's gonna be a great day. We are still in spirit week. This is about as much neon as I could get. It's not really neon, it's like a pastel -y color actually. I fail at neon colors. Like I'm not a neon person, I can't wear neon colors. It just doesn't look good on me. <sighs> So I have no neon on today. Um, and then tomorrow is my spirit wear day, which I'm kind of crossing my fingers that I get to wear jeans tomorrow. Don't know. So I have a couple of things over here that I got to clean up because there's a bunch of mess that's right in that direction. So I'm going to go and do that and get some of that stuff cleaned up. Um, and then I guess I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Um, it is now lunch break, so I'm eating my lunch. Sorry. <laughs> um, wanted to touch base with you guys about what my day has been like for yesterday and today because I know I didn't vlog much yesterday afternoon I'm gonna try to figure out where I can put you so that I can talk to you hold on okay so I thought I had the pieces to my tripod apparently I don't have all the pieces to my tripod so I've stuck you on top of a Clorox bottle so if you fall over I'm really really sorry um, so I'm having my lunch and I want to talk to you guys about what it is that I'm doing inside of reading and writing. So yesterday in writing, um, we've kind of gotten to the point where they were peer editing. So they we used kind of a um, color system. So let me show you really quick. 
pull that back. Okay, I'm just gonna actually pull you with me and take you with me. So we use a color system to highlight and they peer edited. So I set them up with their partner and then they were gonna edit their each other's writing. So one of them was gonna read their writing because I feel like if they're reading their own writing, a lot of the time they're gonna miss those mistakes that are very like, well how did that, how did you miss that? Like very like easy mistakes to miss. So what I have in my room is I kinda have like a little spot over here set up, which I'm missing some of these. So I'm gonna have to check figure out where some of them have taken that. So they have the, four different colors that we use. Um, we use each of these for something specific. So yellow is going to be for words that are misspelled. So anything that they feel like is not spelled correctly, they highlight it with yellow. Blue is for capital letters. So anything that needs to be a capital letter or is a capital letter goes into blue and that's where they so if the beginning of the sentence they highlight it there if they know that it's prone uh, a proper noun they highlight the proper noun that kind of thing or i um that is just by itself they highlight it um then the pink is for punctuation so anywhere where they feel like there should be punctuation or some type of a punctuation whether it be quotation marks at the end of the sentence commas that they're adding it with this and then green is for anything that just needs clarification like they don't quite understand and i even oops and i even tell them that um when we're talking about clarification even if it's like a paragraph if you're not really understanding what's happening in that paragraph kind of box that paragraph in or if it's a sentence that doesn't make sense you know highlight that sentence so this is stuff that i've actually modeled with them with other writings that i have i've kind of created mock writings so i've modeled it with them with other writings that i have um, so that is what they did for two days. It took them about two days to start doing that. When they were finished editing, they went into their iPads into Notability, they created a new note, and they typed, retyped their revised edition of their writing. Um, and so this time they were able to go through and make all those corrections that they saw with the highlighters. So they made the corrections into Notability, make sure that everything kind of made sense. So then yesterday, what I had them doing, they got to go into Pick Collage Kids, which I think it pulls up like Pick Kids, P-I-C Kids, um, which is an app. And they got to place all of their writing onto that app. So I'm gonna kind of show you guys with my, with my, well, with my app, maybe? I don't know. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. Let me try it. So the app is right here. It's called Pick Kids. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna let me zoom in that much. There it is, so that's it right there, Pick Kids. So you click on Pick Kids, and here's what they get to pull up. So I tell them to do a freestyle, and from freestyle, this is where they get to create all their stuff. So I had them like create a background, they got to choose their background for it. Um, they just ended up choosing something simple. And then I tell them, you're gonna add, hey, you can see me, you're going to add some type of photo. So it could be a photo that you've taken where you've kind of created yourself. If it's a dream, you're making, you know, you can create yourself looking like you're sleeping and we had props and that kind of thing. Then we did a web search. So my story was about me um, at a pyramid. So I told them, I was like, I'm gonna add a pyramid into my pictures. So I pulled up pyramid. What's nice is that it pulls up all the options for you. You can click on it and then, add that one in there so I added my picture in there made it as big as I want that kind of thing and then I got to go through and add um, text so here was my text I could add my title um, so my P Y R M A did I spell that right? I don't even know. Pyramid, I can't think right now. My pyramid adventures, let's just say it was that. Okay, so then I could add that up here. I can change the actual color of it so that you can see my text. But all of this was things that they had to be able to put in there. So I told them they had to have a title, they had to have a picture, it needed to be in colors and fonts that were readable, and then they added their text in here, so they copied it from Notability, added it in here, and they had their name at the bottom. <clears throat> what they ended up, ooh, sorry, what they ended up coming up with was 
phenomenal and they enjoyed it they loved it and it showed them just a different way to publish because not everything has to be published with you just rewriting it on a piece of paper it doesn't have to be that way so my goal is to be able to show them some different options for publishing and some different ways that they can publish their final pieces so that is what we did yesterday today um we went on and we looked at a new website and it's called no red ink you can sign up for it you can sign up um, for free with it but what's really nice is it really focuses on on grammar which some of these kids really need grammar they need some of that extra practice so we signed up for no red ink um, while some kids were still finishing with their publishing I didn't want to take them on into the um, <clears throat> the new narrative story that we were going to work on you can sign up for it for free but what's cool is that you can set up different types of reviews or anything like that and then it gives you a diagnostic so it'll tell you in what areas that they need so it makes it really easy to be able to say okay I need to pull this group and go over this type of grammar skill with them really allows for flex grouping which is phenomenal so no red ink.com go and check it out if you have not already um, again it's for free it's gonna give you like a free version of it but then if your school ends up able to getting a license for that which would be even better I'm sure it'll give you way more options I don't have that version yet I'm trying to convince my principal at the moment to try and do that so we'll see how well that works um, so that's what we did in writing and reading where we are right now is we're still working on plot and summary so I went through created an um, uh, anchor chart for them so let me show you that so we've created this anchor chart for them and we've really gone gone in through talking about exposition rising action climax all of that where the problem the solution is located and then they went into notability and uh, oof, Sometimes I hate being in front of the door, but then they went into notability and that is where they were able to take some of their notes. So I gave them like a plain plot map diagram and then they had to go in and write some of those notes. And we did that through a small group. Once we did that, then we went through a story and I gave them, um, I've had different texts for different ones, but some of them was out of that plot scholastic book. In that story, I talk about the scholastic plot and there's a, a set of books where it has plot theme, that kind of thing. That book was so good. There was a story in there that was phenomenal. It was called Backyard Mystery in the Plot Book. Great, great book. I did that one with my afternoon class. For this class, I found just another little article that was really easy. It's about a new kid. Um, and we went through and I we read the story together. We talked about it, kind of kept tracks of our thinking. And then when they were done with that, I took them through plot. So we discussed all five and I kind of wrote out the elements of plot and I can show you. Okay, sorry, it's not fancy. Um, so then we went through, they named all of the five things about plot. And so we talked about that. Then we said, okay, now let's put all of the information that we got from our text into this anchor chart so we went through and started talking about well is Jim is the main character we talked about minor characters but that you know they weren't so significant then we talked about school being at school and then we talked about the important information he was a new kid he was homeschooled um, and then we went into rising action talked about what was the main problem which was really easy for them to get but then we talked about well, what was the evidence from the text that helped support that you know that Jim did not make any friends so here is where we added some of that evidence then we said the climax which is that oh my gosh moment the part where we felt so bad for him it wasn't action but it was that part where you just wanted to hug him was when he was about to cry that falling action part of it was that solution and that's asking him to help pick up the balls at PE and then the resolution this is how the story actually ended was um, Haley invited him to go and lunch ha to have lunch with her friends so um, it was a great 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 story great way for them to be able to do it what I did after that <laughs> will let me be able to see what my students are understanding and what they're not understanding because that's the whole purpose of this. I want to see what they're getting, what they're not getting. For those kids who are not getting certain things, I can pull that flex group and be able to work with them on that specific skill. I don't want to continue working with everybody on that same subject, which is then going to start leading into that whole mass customization, which is what our district is really, really, really focusing on. So what I've done now, after we did that in small group then I gave them an actual plot map that was like clean clear whatever let me show it to you <laughs> so then I gave them this story map and I said okay now I want you to go and I want you to go back to your table with your with your passage and I want you to figure out 
I want you to write down the characters, the settings, so the exposition, the rising action, climax, falling action, and then the resolution. So this was basically, and I said, hey guys, this is easy, or at least it should be, hopefully. I don't know why I said that, but it's, it's hopefully to me to see, okay, one, were you paying attention in class? And two, is it really something that you're grasping? Is it something that you're truly understanding? They had to go back and do it with the same text, but independently and not with me sitting there telling them. I had just gone through the whole thing with them, did it step by step. We talked about, really discussed in details each of those things, but now I wanted to see if they were able to do it independently. So that's where I said, okay, I'm gonna flip this chart over. You're not gonna be able to see it. I wanna see if you can do it independently. And some of them truly struggled. So that means that I'm gonna have to pull them later on to really focus in on some of those skills with them. So. This was a great activity. What's gonna happen tomorrow is then we're gonna take this and start building it into a summary. Um, my hope is to like start seeing where everybody is kind of falling as far as like summarizing in that very first kind of um, almost unit, I wanna say, that I'm working on with them. And then I'm gonna start, you know, pushing some on and continuing working with others on certain things. So everybody's gonna start going in different directions very, very soon. So that's what we're doing. Um, it worked out really well. I'm gonna do the exact same thing in the afternoon with my afternoon class, just with some different texts. Um, and then hopefully see where everything goes. I'm gonna shove my salad down my throat now because I probably have like four minutes and then go to the bathroom. So I'm gonna talk to you guys later on this afternoon. Bye. Hello, happy Friday everyone. Um, so I've been here for quite some time actually. I have been laminating, I've been making copies of things. I'm gonna end up staying here pretty late this evening because I'm working on some curriculum mapping things that I will be happy to show some of you guys so that you guys can kind of check it out and see what you could be doing in your classrooms to make it um, better for your kiddos. So I have kind of a late day today. I am getting everything else ready for just kind of this week and then next week. Next week I have a huge, huge, huge surprise for the kids. Um, I know a lot of you have probably seen them happening on Instagram and that kind of thing, but I'm gonna be doing a room transformation. I've done these with kindergarten. I can't remember if I was like vlogging during that time, but like kindergarten they would come in, we had like, it looked like a farm, it was like the harvest season because we were learning about apples and corn and pumpkins, so I created this farm feel for them. Um, during winter time, um, we made, uh, what did we make? Oh, I was like a winter wonderland. I made it look like snow and there were trees out everywhere. So it was very wintry and that's what we were learning about during that time. So this time for fourth grade, I'm doing something called Pirate Day. Um, this is very much so stemmed from Hope King but my version is a little bit different from hers. I don't know exactly. I mean, I'm doing Pirate Day like she did Pirate Day, but my Pirate Day, the curriculum, I don't know if it matches at all hers. So I kind of fit it to where I needed to fit for my kids, and I'm really excited to be showing you guys some of these things. This weekend I'm working on the boat. I'm working on a few different things that are going to get set up in my classroom, and this classroom is going to be completely transformed to make it look like pirate ships. So I'm so, 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 so excited about sharing all of this with you guys. Um, I will be in touch a little bit later on and talk to you guys about more of what, what it is that I'm doing, and I can show you some things that I'm doing, so very excited about that. So. I need to go get coffee. I know you're probably thinking, oh my word, Bridget, you do not need coffee this morning. You're already wired. I've actually had like, like I've actually been feeling like I have some energy to me, to me right now. But then I go home and I'm like in bed at eight o'clock. So I don't know if my body's just still not like all the way recruit, recuperated. Like I still cough every once in a while. My voice still sounds a little, ugh. but um, I have like, actual energy and I've been loving the lessons that I've been teaching this week. Um, the timer has completely revolutionized me for this year. I think I really just needed that and I think if I want to say that, I don't know, maybe some of the teachers that knew me at my old school would be like, yeah, you definitely had to. I think I remember having have, having to do timers at the beginning of the year. So maybe that's just my thing. I have to have a timer at the beginning of the year to be able to get myself back into the groove of things because I have a tendency to talk too much. So I'm going to go get my coffee and uh, talk with my partner teacher, make sure everything's good there. And then I'll talk to you guys in a little while. 
so excited. I just got my breakout EDU box. Let's open it up together. Did an awful job just unboxing this thing. a smaller box inside of it with all of the parts in here. I don't know what these locks are called, so I'm not going to be able to tell you. I know that this is the light pin. We have a flashlight, which is in here. Here is the number lock, a key lock, a directional lock, flash drive, two hit cards, the word block, um, lock, and the three number lock. So, so excited. I'm so, so, so excited. Yay! Okay, so I'm looking like I straight up just died. I'm sorry about that because I did not put any makeup on today. So, ooh, I'm looking a little rough. Um, it's Saturday. I came into the classroom just for a, like a smidgen. Like a smidgen, I promise. Just a smidgen, smidgen. So I came in today just to be able to make a couple copies that I wasn't able to make Friday afternoon since I was meeting with another teacher on um, planning out a unit that we're gonna be doing and then a some curriculum stuff. So I needed to come in to be able to get a few things done. And that's what I'm here for. But then I get here and then I'm like, what am I doing? What's happening? What's going on? I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing. So I don't know how much I'm actually gonna be end up staying. Um, might just cut up a few pieces that I need, put up my board, and then just kind of leave after that. So how's everything going? How is um, school the year going? I'm assuming that a lot of people are starting to feel a little bit better about the school year. Like typically October, by like the end of October, you're starting to kind of get your rhythm. You're starting to feel a little bit better um, than some of the chaos and you know, between like learning schedules. I don't know how many of you actually like have like your schedule changes every year. Um, I've had it both. So I've had where my schedule didn't change. Oh, sorry. I've had it to where my schedule didn't change and then I've had it to where um, I had a change in my schedule so I had to like relearn a whole new schedule um, and that was actually in kindergarten so um, yeah I finally started feeling better about my schedule and how everything's working here and I think I'm it's helped me quite a bit like once I've started putting alarms on and getting myself into the flow of it, it's helped me a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton. So for my kids, for when we do like independent writing and stuff, and they finish like the assignment that they're given for writing that we're specifically working on together, they can do um, just independent writing. Well, I have like a little basket here with all their little highlighters that they use for editing, but it has like all these different writing prompts that can help them create like brainstorm lists of things that fit within this like bigger idea. So um, that is what I'm doing. I'm actually putting some more here so that they can use those. But yeah. Okay, so I really don't have a lot to get done. I'm actually gonna just head out. I need to run some couple of errands at the stores and start working on some projects that we have going on for this week. So I'm gonna end up my video because I've been really, really bad about ending my videos this week. Um, I'm gonna blame it on the sickness. That's all I gotta say. Um, so guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this really choppy and long 
video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will talk to you guys really, really soon. Bye. Okay, so what I'm doing now is something called status of the class, where I am writing the date up here, and every single day I do one of these for my AM class and for my PM class. Their names are already in the boxes, but really quick,